good morning students so today we are going to study about the various stages of the second type of cell division that is known as meiosis but before this i want to tell you a little more about the stage cytokinesis of mitosis so here i have told you that cytokinesis actually is the division of the cytoplasm or you can say it is the distribution of the cytoplasm between the two daughter cells so here one picture is visible to you so this is the process of cytokinesis in case of plant cells so here what you see some vesicles they are develop in the center from the golgi apparatus see the diagram the vesicles they are develop in the center from the golgi apparatus they appear at the equatorial plate and from these vesicles the the structures these vesicles later known as the structures called cell plates so these cell plates which are the simple precursors they grows from center towards the lateral position and they join the cell wall of the adjacent daughter cells so in this way these simple precursors which are actually the cell plates they are later known as the middle lamella so in this way middle lamella it is formed between the two adjacent daughter cells so see the stages of development of this middle lamella here i have written these uh, fuse to form new plasma membrane all right the contents of the vesicle they form the cell plate that is the beginning of the new cell wall so in this way later on when there is a growth of this cell plate towards the periphery from the center it is known as centri fugal type of growth and later it separates the two daughter cells so here you see two two daughter cells they develop and they get separated later on so here you can see the stage of cytokinesis in case case of animal cells so what happen in case of animal cells a furrow like structure develop and this furrow like structure it shows it its growth towards the center this means this type of growth is known as the centripetal growth so here it is written contractile ring or furrow is developed and later on it grows towards the center and it joins at the center and in this way the cytoplasm it gets distributed between the two daughter cells and the two daughter cells they get separated from each other with the help of a membrane which later act as the plasma membrane between the two adjacent daughter cells so see here i have written the description that in mitosis not only the segregation of the duplicated chromosomes into daughter nuclei takes place which you called as karyokinesis but also the cell itself is divided into two daughter cells and by the separation of the cytoplasm and it is known as cytokinesis that so what i have explained you that in case of animal cell this division of the parent cell into two daughter cells it is achieved by a furrow like structure which is formed in the plasma membrane and this furrow it gradually deepens and it ultimately joins in the center and dividing the cell cytoplasm into two or you can say it divide the cytoplasm between two daughter cells and in this way two daughter cells they assume their individual identity they get separated and they function as individual units okay student what about plant cells so here i have explained that wall formation starts in the center of the cell this means this type of growth is known as centrifugal type of growth that is growth starts from the center then it grows outward to meet the existing lateral walls the formation of the new cell wall it begins with the formation of simple precursors which are known as the cell plate and these cell plate like structures they are developed from the vesicles of the golgi apparatus and later they represent the middle lamella with between the walls of the two adjacent cells so in this way the process of cytokinesis it takes place in the plant cell so there is a wide difference between the process of cytokinesis between the plant cell as well as the animal cell okay student here i am going to discuss the significance of the mitosis so first significance of mitosis is that it is a kind of a division which always result in the production of diploid daughter cells 
with identical genetic complement that means the number of chromosomes which are present in the daughter cell they are always similar with the number of chromosome parent present in the parent cell that means if parent is diploid then the daughter cells they are also diploid and second point is the growth of multicellular organisms is takes place due to the process of mitosis that is mitosis is the process which causes growth in case of multicellular organisms up to their vegetative phase and third one is a cell growth sometimes a result in disturbing the ratio between the nucleus and the cytoplasm so mitosis is the process which restore this nucleo cytoplasmic ratio and the fourth point is the cell of the upper layer of the epidermis we generally comes in contact with the external environment the cells which forms the lining of your gut as well as the blood cells all of these they are constantly replaced with the help of this cell division which is known as mitosis and this mitotic division it also occurs in the meristematic tissues that is the apical meristematic cells for example root apical meristem shoot apical meristem and the lateral meristems lateral meristem for example cambium this cambium is responsible for increasing the girth of this stem that means it makes the stem booty and because of it the diameter of the trunk of the stem increases so this all happens due to the process of mitosis okay students now we come on our main topic of today and that is meiosis so student all of you know very well that the complex multicellular organisms they have advanced mode of reproduction and that is a sexual mode of reproduction so in the life cycle of every organism there are two phases one is the vegetative phase which is known as the growth period of that organism and the other phase is known as the reproductive phase which starts after the stage of puberty or you can say zooginile phase in case of plants so sometimes we can use the word zooginile phase in case of plants for puberty and puberty is the term that is used for animals so after the end of this puberty stage there is initiation of the reproductive phase so during reproductive phase what happen there is a growth of the reproductive organs so as a result when these reproductive organs they grow in their size then later they are involved in some processes which generally produce the gametes so these processes they are collectively known as gametogenesis so here as a result of these processes gamete cells are formed but these gamete cells they are formed from the gamete mother cells for example if we are taking the example of human beings you know that in human beings the male reproductive organ is testes and the female reproductive organ is ovaries so one pair of testes and one pair of ovaries are present in the abdominal part of your body so here what happened during the reproductive phase these the testes they grow in size and a process takes place in this testes which are known as spermatogenesis so during the process of spermatogenesis the special type of cells which are actually known as the gamete cells known as spermatogonia they undergo meiosis and as a result of meiosis they produce haploid gametes which are known as the sperms these are the male gametes in humans and similarly in case of female body what happened here the pair of ovaries are present so these ovaries they also have gamete mother cells which are known as oogonia cells so these oogonia cells they undergo meiosis they are themselves diploid but they undergo meiosis and later they form ovum which are the gamete of the female so in this way when both of these male and female gametes they fuse together during the process of fertilization then they restore the diploid condition so you can define meiosis that meiosis is a process in which the diploid cells they reduced to the haploid cells so here we know very well that these gamete mother cells they are the diploid cells but when they undergo meiosis then they form gamete which are the haploid cells and one very important thing i want to discuss here about meiosis is that meiosis is also known as reductional division why it is known as reductional division because it reduces the number of the chromosome to half of its actual number 
for example if parent cell is diploid this means the offsprings or the daughter cells which develop from these parent cells by sexual reproduction they are haploid in number for example if there are 46 chrom chromosome in humans then in male gamete there are 23 chromosome and in the female gamete there are also 23 chromosome so when these 23 23 gamete cells they fuse together they form zygote which again has 46 chromosomes in this way meiosis is a process which maintains a specific number of chromosome in the species if meiosis it did not occur in the species then the chromosome number in each generation it would become double and double and as a result the offspring die so always remember student this process always yield gametes or sex cells and it reduces the number of the chromosome to half of its actual value okay student here i am going to tell you that meiosis which is known as reductional division is of two types meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 so meiosis 1 is a truly reductional division so here in this process the chromosome number it gets half of its actual value so this cell division it reduces the chromosome number by one half so here we are going to discuss about the four phases of this meiosis so first stage is known as the prophase one stage next to prophase one we have metaphase one then we have anaphase one and then we have telophase one stage okay students see the slide that is related with the stages of meiosis one so here i have told you earlier that the first stage of meiosis one is prophase one so here I have written meiosis 1 is the truly reductional division. So here diploid mother cells are there. And when these diploid mother cells, they undergo meiosis. Then they form two haploid cells. And both of these two haploid daughter cells, they have half number of chromosome as compared to the parent cell, which is double number of chromosome or diploid in number. All right. So here the first stage, which is known as the prophase 1 stage, it has the following substages. So the first substage of prophase 1 is lactotin, then we have zygotin, then we have tachytin, diplotin and dikinesis. After dikinesis, the prophase 1 stage it completes and this prophase 1 is later followed by metaphase 1, then anaphase 1 and then telophase 1. So here I have shown you the uh, different stages in a diagrammatic manner. Alright student, first of all I am going to take the first substage of prophase. Before this, I want to tell you as compared to the pro prophase of the meta mitosis, here the prophase 1 of meiosis 1 is a extra complex and a lengthy stage. That means it is a long stage, its duration is a very large, large duration uh, of this prophase 1 is there. So, here I am going to tell you about the first stage that is known as the lactotin stage. So this lactotin stage, it is also known as lactonema. Lactonema is a Greek word. And this word means thin threads. So when you view this stage under the microscope, what you observe, you observe individual chromosomes, which can be very much easily visible to a light microscope. And these individual chromosomes, they begin to condense into the long strands within the nucleus. So here one thing you observe is that the two sister chromatids, they are still so tightly bound with each other that you cannot distinguish one sister chromatid from the other. So here compactation of the chromosomes takes place during the lactotin stage. You can see the diagram students. So here you can easily see the chromosomes and the, each chromosome it consists of Chromatids and the chromatids of the chromosome are known as sister chromatids. They are so much tightly arranged with each other in the form of long stands that you cannot distinguish one sister chromatid from the another. This is all about leptotene. Now next to the leptotene, the second substage of Prophias one is zygotene. It is also known as zygonema stage. So here what you see, all of these individual chromosomes which are earlier in the leptotene stage, they lie very near to the other or adjacent chromosomes and they are compact in nature. They are sister chromatids. They are also very much compact 
and tightly arranged to each other now what happened during the zygotene stage all of these chromosomes they try to get separated from each other they start moving from each other they get apart from each other and see in the second picture what is there all of these chromosomes which have equal length equal structure they try to arrange themselves in the form of pairs so in this way in this way the pairing of this chromosome is known as a process which is known as synapses and these paired chromosomes they are known as the bivalents so here you see those chromosomes which are of equal size and length they make one pair and those chromosomes which are equal in their size they make the another pair so these all of these pairs they are known as the bivalents and the process of pairing is known as synapses when you view this stage under the electron microscope then you see that here a complex structure is formed and that complex structure is known as the synaptonemal complex so here in synaptonemal complex the chromatids of all the two chromosomes as you know in one chromosome there is how many chromatids two chromatids and in the other chromosome two chromatids are there so all of these four chromatids it appears that they lie side by side and in this way a complex structure is formed which is known as the tetra which are which is known as saptonemal complex and this arrangement of the chromatids of the two homologous chromosomes it is known as a tetrad formation because here how many chromatids are there four chromatids are there so this type of arrangement in the form of a complex structure known as saptonemal complex it is known as a tetrad so process 1 the upper two stages of the process 1 that is the lactotene stage and the zygotene stage these stages stages are comparatively shorter in duration but after the zygotene stage we have the next sub stage which is known as the packetine stage so this packetine stage is a little bit of more duration as compared to the previous two stage so here this packetine stage or you can say packinema what happen these homologous chromosomes they become very much closely associated with each other they are known as the snaps now the snap the homologous chromosome they form the tetrad and this tetrad it consists of four chromatids all right so here you see the complex structure synaptonemal complex is there and you also observe that what happened during the packetine stage so here the packetine stage four chromatids of each bivalent they become distinct from each other they form the tetrad i have already discussed and here here is appearance of recombination nodules so what is these recombination nodules these recombination nodules are actually the points where these homologous chromosomes they attached with each other or you can say they are chromatids they get attached with each other at these recombination nodules so at these recombination nodules later a process takes place which is known as crossing over so what happen between these snapped chromosomes the non sister chromatids that means those chromatids which do not belong to the same chromosome these non sister chromatids they are involved in the process which is known as crossing over so during crossing over what happen these non sister chromatids some of their parts they get broken and from one chromatid of the one chromosome it shifts towards the chromatid of the other chromosome in this way both the non sister chromatids they exchange their part and this process is known as a crossing over another name for the crossing over is a recombination so here one enzyme is involved and the name of the enzyme is recombinase so you must remember the characteristic feature of the packetin stage is the appearance of the recombination nodules for the purpose of recombination or crossing over and what is crossing over crossing over is actually a process in which the homologous chromosome they exchange their part between their non sister chromatids so always remember not all the chromatids they participate in the process of crossing over only the non sister chromatids they exchange their parts and they are involved in the process of crossing over or recombination so here i want to discuss one very important thing 
is that you know that in the chromatids a dna helix it usually run and this dna it carries a gene so when there is a non sister chromatids or different chromosomes which we called as homologous chromosome they exchange their parts then the genes present on the non sister chromatid of one chromosome it goes from that chromatid to the other and in this way the same process it repeats for the other chromosomes or you can say vice versa so in this way the sexually reproducing organisms they have variations and they have the longer life span as compared to the asexually reproducing organisms in which mitosis takes place so that's all regarding the packeting stage the next stage is known as the diploidean stage so diploidean stage is the stage that comes after the packeting stage so here what happen it is also known as diploema so here the homologous chromosome they start separating from each other a little but there are certain points where the homologous chromosome they are still attached with each other as you know recombination not used so though the chromosomes they get separated from each other but at certain points still the chromosomes they are attached with each other and these are actually the recombination nodules so as a result of this attachment at different points which are known as recombination nodules a x shaped structure is formed and this x shaped structure is known as chestnut so here the characteristic feature of the diploidean stage is the chestnut formation so here the chromosome they themselves uncoiled a bit allowing some transcription of the dna is also there so when the chromosome they uncoil a little bit then it allows the transcription of dna that means here the messenger rna also gets synthesized from the dna all right student the last stage after diploidean stage sub stage you can say it is the diakinesis stage so the one of the characteristic feature of this diakinesis stage is the terminalization of the recombination nodules that is earlier i have told you in the diploidean stage the chromosome they start separating from each other here these chromosomes are the new crossover chromosomes they start separating from each other a little bit but at certain points they are uh, attached with each other still they are attached with each other and these are actually the recombination nodules and a structure is formed which is chestnut so here what happen in diakinesis in diakinesis there is terminalization of these uh, chestnut so at those junctions where the chromosome they are still attached with either each other from there also the chromosome they get separated so in this way what happened the fully condensed chromosome they came into existence they are actually the newly crossed over chromosome and later there are certain other things happen here the nuclear involve they totally disintegrate so there is no nuclear involve but there are centroids present and these centroids they are located at the opposite pole and from these centroids the spindle apparatus it originates and these non crossover chromosome they start arranging themselves at these spindle apparatus okay students so there is a complete disintegration of the nucleolus and the nuclear envelope during the diakinesis stage centroids are there but they are located at the opposite pole and spindle fibers they get arising from these centroids with from their microbodies and microtubules you can say and these new crossover chromosomes they start arranging themselves haphazardly on these spindle fibers okay student the next is the metaphase 1 stage so after the diakinesis sub stage the extra long prophase 1 of the meiosis 1 completes now after the prophase 1 stage the next stage is known as the metaphase stage so always remember student here the chromosomes are not the ordinary chromosome these chromosomes are actually the newly crossed over chromosome that means they are both those newly developed chromosomes which have already exchanged their parts they have the parts of some other chromosome attached with them so these bivalent chromosomes what they do they start aligning themselves on the equatorial plate as already happen in the metaphase stage as usual so these bivalent chromosomes which are actually the non crossing over chromosomes and which are actually the crossed over chromosome i'm sorry so they start aligning themselves on the equatorial plate which you call as metaphase now the microtubules from the opposite poles of the spindle 
attached to the kinetic core of this homologous chromosome. This means how this homologous chromosome they get attached with the spindle apparatus with the help of their uh, centromeres. And on the centromere, disc shaped structures are present, which are known as kinetochore. So, in this way, these homologous chromosome they attach themselves on both sides, or you can say opposite poles of the cell. Okay, students, here I have shown you both the stages and of the stages of mitosis and meiosis. I want to tell you actually what is the major difference between the anaphase of mitosis and anaphase 1 of meiosis. So here student in anaphase 1, what happened? The homologous chromosome, they separate, not the chromatid. I am not using the word chromatid. I am saying the homologous chromosomes. Whole of the homologous chromosome, they get separated. While the sister chromatid, they remain associated at the centromeres. So here the centromeres, they do not divide. These centromeres, though they move towards the opposite poles, but they carry both the chromosome with each, with itself. So in this way, what you see in this stage, two of the homologous chromosomes, they are moving towards the opposite pole. Another two, they move towards the another opposite pole. So here there is no division of the centromere instead of that. Single centromere is there and it uh, pushes the whole chromosome towards the opposite pole. So here you can see anaphase stage of mitosis. The anaphase is the stage during which the centromere they split. Alright, in case of mitosis I am saying. And what happened instead of chromosome, chromatids they separate. With their newly formed centromere and in this way, the chromosome it move apart towards the opposite poles. So these chromosomes they are genetically identical chromosomes. All right. So here you see during the anaphase one stage, the homologous chromosome they get separated, while the chromatid they remain attached at their center. So here in anaphase one stage, the chromosome of the each bivalent pair is separate, while the sister chromatids they remain. Okay, so there is no separation of the sister chromatid nor there is division of the centromere. Okay, student, the last stage of meiosis 1 is known as the telophase 1 stage. So what happened during the telophase 1 stage? So here the disintegrate nuclear membrane and nuclear last it reappears. Because the telophase stage is later followed by the stage cytokinesis. So as a result of which, diet of cells are and in many cases, sometimes the chromosome, they do not undergo such a dispersion. So they do not extremely extend the state of the interface nucleus. So here you see in the diagram that diode formation is there. So two daughter cells are visible to you very well. And both of these daughter cells, they have the uh, number of chromosomes that are half the number of chromosomes present in the parent cell. As you, as you see that how many chromosomes are present Initially in the parents are four chromosomes are there. So at the end of the telophase stage, when two diode or daughter cells are formed, so instead of four chromosomes, each of the daughter cell carry half the number of chromosomes. So two two chromosomes are present in diode of the daughter cells. Okay, student, here I want to discuss a very important uh, thing that is known as interkinesis. So what is interkinesis? The stage between Two meiotic divisions is actually known as interkinesis. And it is very short-lived stage. And one thing you must have to remember in your mind that there is no replication of DNA during interkinesis. So interkinesis is later followed by prophase second, which is a much simpler type of prophase as compared to the prophase one of meiosis one. Because you know that the second meiotic division is very much similar to mitosis. So you can say it is synonym with mitosis. That's why the prophase which is present in the meiosis 2, it is also the simpler one. So that's all about the all the stages of the meiosis 1 cell division. So I have already discussed you students that in we have two types of meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So meiosis 1, it is always a reductional division, whereas meiosis 2 is very much similar to the mitosis. So what happened at the completion of both the meiosis, that is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, four daughter cells are formed 
and each of these daughter cells they have half the number of chromosome as present in the parent cell so that's all in today's lecture students so read the chapter up to various stages of meiosis one after this we will do what happened during the different stages of meiosis two so that's all okay students revise your revise your chapter uh, and we will meet on monday till then have a nice day students